Yet another Red Raider is in the transfer portal. This time, it's sophomore guard Lamar Washington. And in today's video, we'll discuss his entry into the portal and why things could be getting a little brighter for the Red Raiders when it comes to the portal as a potential prospect could be set for a visit to the 806. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. It goes a long way in terms of helping the channel and letting us know what kind of content y'all like. So do that as well as head on over to the scarlet and black insider.com where you can stay in the know on everything Texas Tech men's basketball in the transfer portal at the drop of a hat. I mean, we are keeping you up to date on everything in terms of the latest visits, the players that Texas Tech has contacted and much, much more. So join one of the fastest growing Texas Tech communities on the internet over on the scarlet and black insider.com. All right, let's jump into, uh, Today's video in terms of Lamar Washington, because you look at what the Red Raiders have on the roster and um, it's not much right now. And now it gets a little bit thinner as Lamar Washington is set to enter the transfer portal for the Red Raiders. This news isn't surprising. I don't think it should surprise anyone at all in that regard. But and I, and I should say this too, I don't think it's anywhere near surprising as Devin Cambridge um, last night at the time of this recording. Now, Lamar averaged about two points per game, one and a half rebounds, and he played in 30 games for the Red Raiders in year number one of Grant McCaslin, averaged just about nine minutes. You may remember before stepping foot on campus, Lamar Washington was a four-star commitment, and there was buzz last year that maybe he was going to enter the portal. Now, it's official. He is going to enter the portal and leave Texas Tech more than likely, and if we're being honest about it, I don't think it should surprise anybody in the sense that not only he's going to test the portal, but also if he heads west. Remember, he's a West Coast guy. I think that's probably where he ends up. What level? TBD on that front. It would not shock me at all if he ends up at UNLV. Remember, former Texas Tech assistant coach, Coach Barrett Peary, is out at UNLV. He was a big reason that Lamar ended up in the 806. Maybe they reconnect out there with the running rebels. That's just a theory on my part. But when it comes down to it, Lamar didn't really do too much in the 806. And some of that was partly his own doing. And some of it was just circumstance, right? In the sense of you had a lot of good guards in front of him and he just really couldn't carve out a role for the Red Raiders in terms of sustainability and actually playing double digit minutes as a sophomore. Now, when it comes to where Texas Tech is right now, in the sense of how many scholarships are available, RC? Great question. Nine. Yeah, you heard that right. Nine scholarships available. As it stands right now for the Red Raiders, there are only four scholarship players on the roster right now that are not in the portal, okay? That is Darion Williams, Chance McMillan, Kerwin Walton, Ameli Alahu, and then as a walk-on, you have Jack Francis. Um, you also have another walk-on from the high school ranks coming in. So technically only four scholarship players, two walk-ons as it stands right now for the Red Raiders going into the 2024-2025 season. No need to panic. It's still very early on in the transfer portal process. In fact, the Red Raiders, as it stands right now, could potentially be getting some good news in the sense of a portal target visiting the 806. In fact, let's go ahead and talk about that right now. Don't be surprised if you hear about Brendan Winsel from Wyoming being on an official visit to the 806 here in the not-too-distant future. He's a 6'7 guard with one year remaining. He averaged about 11.5 points per game last year, five rebounds, just over one assist, but he shot the lights out, shooting nearly 38% from three. Really good catch-and-shoot guy, can guard multiple positions, has a good high basketball IQ, and understands spacing and how to use screens really well to create that maximum space for him to get an open look on the offensive end. Now, my comp for him has been this, mostly because of the body size and everything like that, is Justin Gray. However, Texas Tech fans will know that name, Justin Gray, but I think Winsel is a better offensive player, but a little bit worse of a defensive player when it comes to that comp. I think he's a much better shooter than Gray, but I don't think he's as good of a defender on the defensive end. That said, I think he could be a valuable piece and a guy that really helps elevate Texas Tech in terms of that length aspect if he were to commit. Now, I'm not saying he's committing right now, but it does sound like he will be on a potential visit to the 806. Why is this interesting? Also, a layer to this. 
His dad is a Texas Tech alumni. And B-Dub has made it very, very clear he wants to play his final year of collegiate basketball in the Lone Star State. Now, Texas Tech isn't the only high major school going after him in the Lone Star State, but that's a nice little nugget to have on your side if you're the Red Raiders in terms of dad being an alumni, him wanting to play in the Lone Star State. Maybe you can figure something out there, but again, do not be surprised if you hear Brendan Winsel on a visit to the 806 here in the not-too-distant future. But the news in this video as well is Lamar Washington is headed towards the portal. The Red Raiders currently have nine scholarships remaining. Quite a bit. There's no doubt about that. And then again, talking about Winslow, I expect things to start heating up for him in terms of visits and everything like that. But something to note on the visits. The time of this recording is Wednesday, April 3rd. For those that don't know, a dead period is set to start for college basketball from Thursday, April 4th to Thursday, April the 11th, and it ends at noon Eastern time on the 11th. That's just a dead period for the Final Four and everything like that, the national championship game. So it will be interesting to see the timing of this. Does he potentially get this visit in before the dead period, or is he right on campus as soon as the dead period ends? will be very interesting to see with Brendan Winslow, and a lot of things can obviously happen, so you're going to want to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast, and the easiest way to make sure you see these videos is like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell, and while you're at it, you might as well leave a comment too just to get that YouTube algorithm going so it can go to the top of your feed so you can stay in the know on everything Texas Tech men's basketball all year long. Another place to do that is the Scarlet and Black Insider, Austin Massey, Jacob Harris, and myself, are keeping you in the know on everything Texas Tech men's basketball, including the latest visit rumors. Rumors in terms of players that Texas Tech has contacted and much, much more. So join the Scarlet and Black Insider today. I'll leave the link down below in the comments. And listen, don't panic, Texas Tech fans. It's okay right now. You got nine scholarships. I get it. It's one of those deals where it's like there's not very many players left. You still got that core right now. In terms of Darion Williams, Chance McMillan, those two guys are pivotal to have. And you still have Kerwin Walton and Amelia Yalahu as well. So nice foundation for Texas Tech. There's no doubt about that. And they're um, they're going after some pretty big names in the portal as well in terms of maybe not the biggest names, but guys that I think could come in and make an impact. The name that is to know right now for Texas Tech fans in terms of a potential visit, though, one more time before we head out of here, is Brendan Winsel of Wyoming. Do not be surprised if you hear about him being out in the 806 on campus for an official visit here in the not too distant future for the Red Raiders. Six seven guard from Wyoming averaged about 11 and a half points per game for the Cowboys. And a little nugget before we head out of here, his dad is a Texas Tech alumni. I am RC Maxfield reminding you if you want to stay in the know on Texas Tech men's basketball all year long, well, just hit that subscribe button to join the largest group of Texas Tech fans here on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel.